Oh, it definitely was off some air, man. I can ride my bike with no handlebars. Wow, we got washed out. Greetings, motor guys and motor gals, and welcome back to the 333. Yeah, another season back out on the mule. And I'm gonna nominate my intro music as the official theme song for moto vlogging. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why I feel that is spot on the money. And we are on the forest road today, and it's nice and carved up from the Jeeps. As you can see, a lot of mud holes, we got a little bit of rain. But that's all right, we're having some fun. And I don't know if you can tell, but the mule has a, a new set of vocal cords, man. I put the camel enduro pipe on it. Yeah, so it's been a while for me, right? Uh, in case you're curious, I do have my new beer can. Hey, it's the 333, man. I haven't vlogged in a while. Let's see how many people I can piss off before my intro's over. <laughs> Down onto the power lines. Little rippage. All right, my boy, let's hear those new vocal cords. Yeah, buddy. Nice and whooped out out here today. Yes. All right. So, anyway, what have I been doing since November of 22? Well, the last vlog post I did, I did basically a vlog on how the Tenere is up on the freeway. Uh, it's kind of a common topic that I've seen raised uh, by people who, a question that people had who were like sort of interested in the bike and uh, were kind of concerned, you know, how the bike responds at speed because it has kind of a reputation for sort of being a big dirt bike. I unfortunately had two back-to-back -back bouts with COVID, which kind of sucked. So, you know, we ended up having this really mild winter here in the Northeast. In other words, if there was going to be a winter that you could, you know, you could get out and shred in, uh, this should have been the winter. You know, I should have been out a lot on the mule uh, practicing and doing some, you know, winter month off riding. And... And I just didn't do it because honestly for, gosh, probably for, a, I would say for a solid two and a half months, um, I felt just terrible, like physically. So after a few early distractions, hopefully we're back in business now. Like I said, put a bunch of new stuff on the, on the mule, but I was also just checking my front tire pressure. When I first got out on that first fire road, I hit a big, a big Jeep divot and it knocked about five pounds of pressure out of my front tire. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's slowly leaking. I think it's holding it. So I'll probably have to check it throughout the day today. But yeah, it just comes with the territory. Got a little mini compressor, put a few more pounds of air in it. Tightened up the pipe a little bit because it's sort of moving around, loosening up. And uh, I think we're back in business. <laughs> All right, let's so let's get into this while I'm still focused on moto vlogging <laughs> and not and not on running into shit. So the first, what I would label half truth, is the concept of standing on an adventure bike. And I know, I know, everybody's like, "What are you talking about? Standing is an essential skill on adventure biking." And look, I'm standing, man. <laughs> no, we all stand and standing is one of those critical base skills that you have to get comfortable with getting up on the pegs. You've seen me put videos out where I'm like, you got to get up on the pegs as soon as you can. Uh, I'm by no means saying that standing is wrong. Uh, what I am going to, what I am going to assert, however, is that there's an effective way to stand and an ineffective way to stand. 
Nomad Sweden, in one of his last vlog posts, coined a term. I'm going to give him credit for it. Other people may have already been using it, but I, he's the first one I heard use it, so I'm going to give him credit for it. And he referred to standing on adventure bikes as imitating mirror cats, right? So I've adopted that for myself. Uh, Nomad Sweden, I'm stealing your term. Uh, I will now refer to the incorrect way of standing as mirror cat. And I should, I should qualify that. It's not incorrect. It's kind of ineffective. So I'm going to get off road here in like 30 seconds. And you won't be able to really see from my camera view how I'm standing. But uh, what I've been working on personally, so I'm going to put a picture of myself up here. This is a picture of myself training because I don't want to pick on anybody else. I'll just pick on myself. We're going to get off road here. So now I'm standing, right? Okay. So there's a picture of me from training and that is the meerkat. So you can see this was very early on in my riding and I didn't know what I was doing and I was just learning. And that is a textbook example of the meerkat stand. Straight up and down, arms locked, far out over the tank, over the handlebars, uh, petrified, tense. Uh, and this is, this is not an effective way to stand on your adventure bike. So, I'm going to put another picture up here. <laughs> and this is the one and only Ricky Carmichael. And if you don't know who Ricky Carmichael is, uh, he is one of probably, I would say, if not the greatest, one of the greatest motocross racers to like grace the planet. But he has since retired from competitive motocross, I believe. I don't think he competes anymore. And he has become the awesome spokesperson for Triumph Adventure Bikes. And there's a ton of, ton of videos out of Ricky doing group rides. And he just shreds on that Tiger 900 Rally Pro, which is a superb bike. One that I wouldn't mind ending up on someday. But for right now, I'm very happy with the mule. Uh, so yeah, so in this picture, you can clearly see Mr. Carmichael's body position. So yeah, so my, my personal motto for this riding season has become less meerkat and more Ricky. You know, more Ricky, less meerkat, right? So, you know, I'm kind of going through a section now. It's not too bad. It's a little twisty. It's got a little bit of sand in the corners. But in general now, you know, what I do is, uh, you know, and I just kicked the rear out there a little bit. What I do is like, you know, I try to get back over the back wheel now. You know, I don't, I'm trying not to stand straight up. I'm trying not to use stiff arms. I'm trying to use my legs and my arms as a shock absorber system. I'm trying to get my ass back over the back seat. I'm um, trying to keep my legs flexed to absorb these kind of dips and potholes and dipsy doos and stuff that kind of comes up that's hard. I'm trying not to just stiffen up on the bike and let the bike do all the work. I'm trying to sort of work with the bike. Uh, what I would equate it to is, I don't know if you've ever known anybody who's like a serious equestrian or a rider. You know, somebody who can really ride a horse, well, they don't just sit on the horse and just go for a ride. They ride the horse, right? And I just want to keep an eye on this guy. He'll probably let me go by him at some point if he's cool. But yeah, a lot of people like to take their trucks back here. Thanks, man. All right, so yeah, so I'm actively riding this thing, man. I'm not just going along for a ride. I'm not lollygagging. I'm not wagging my arms up, elbows up, wrists down. I'm kind of keeping myself loosey-goosey for when I hit the sand. You know what I mean? Like, so you want to be like an active rider on the bike. That's what you got to kind of do on these bikes. You got to be like actively engaged. You got to get that weight over that back wheel. You got to stay loose on the front, uh, front handlebars and you got to let the bike do its work, right? So that's what I would say. So it's a half truth. So standing, just standing for the sake of standing is not good enough. You got to stand like Ricky, man. You got to actively participate. Okay, so that is half truth number one. I will say the second half truth 
uh, violates something that I've held on to very strictly since I've been riding. And that is, I think a lot of ADV riders who are trying to get off more, you know, off road more, really off road and spend more of their time off road and riding and sort of exploring this kind of stuff, fire roads and, you know, forest, forest roads and things like that. What I've been seeing or what I've been noticing, at least sort of in the vlogging sphere, is that a lot of new riders are overdressing for the ride. And I know that's that's controversial, right? We want to you want to dress for the slide and not for the ride, right? That's that's the motto that most of us have lived with since we've been riding. And anybody that goes full ACAT, I have total respect for you because I've always gone full ACAT, right? But what I found is me personally, again, this is I'm not saying this is across the board. I think this is an individual thing, depending on what your how you ride, what your tolerances are, what you how you feel, you know. Uh, I feel that when I get out here, particularly in the middle of summer, like right now today, it's kind of cool, so not a big deal today, right? But you come out in July when it's like 90 degrees out, and a big, a big safety concern for me, and I think a legitimate safety concern, is dispelling heat, right? Heat is a big factor when you're adventure riding. It really is, and people underestimate it completely. And so what I'll see, especially in you know, riders that are just coming out. And I did this as well. And even in my picture, you can see I got my, I got my street, you know, I've got my street riding gear on, right? My street riding jacket, my street riding gloves in my mirror, in my mirror cat photo. Uh, what I've discovered after, you know, a couple years of riding this stuff is you need to find a balance between protection and um, heat disbursement, right? Yeah, baby, dig in. Uh, is that a deer? No, okay. Uh, yeah, so you've got to find a way to dispel that heat. You know, you come out here in the summer months and you're working it, working it through the sand, working it through the mud, navigating around mud holes, whoops, uh, different obstacles, things like that, where you're, where you're actively participating, right? You know, point number one, when you're sanding, you got to be active on the bike. Uh, you're going to start, you know, you're going to start overheating for sure. And it happened to me definitely early, early on in riding you know, where I was coming out in full gear, coming out in summertime, you know, spending most of my time back on these roads, not on asphalt, you know, with my full on CE slide rated street gear. And I was overheating big time. So you've got to find your own compromise on what you can tolerate as far as protection, protective equipment and dispelling the heat. Cause I think dispelling the heat is really important especially if you're spending a lot of your time off-road. Like I said, I, I use a motocross jersey. I use some basic elbow protection, basic hand protection. Uh, one of the key pieces of equipment that I, ride, that I wear now that does offer a level protection is the Klim Tactical Vest. Uh, this by far is probably my favorite piece of riding equipment now. And I'm gonna put a picture of it and a link up. And this thing is just phenomenal. It's got, you know, it's got the military style pocketing on it. Um, it holds all my stuff. I don't have to wear a backpack anymore. Uh, I can get to all my stuff quickly and easily. My phone, uh, keys, wallet, all that stuff is in these tactical pockets. And it's a really, really great piece of riding equipment and I really like it. So I would definitely recommend that if you're gonna do a lot of adventure bike riding. Yeah, so like I said, that's uh that's what I believe is a half truth and also a half truth that you gotta fully pad up with street gear. Uh you don't necessarily. I think you have to find a mix of kind of what works for you. You know, I think it's more important to find a mix of what works for you in that regard. Uh, the next half truth is people are putting way too much shit on their bikes. And that sort of circles back to what I was alluding to at the beginning of this. You know, what I did for this season is I I wanted to cut a lot of weight off the mule. I wanted to be nimble and quick and, and uh, responsive. So, uh, give a shout out to another vlogger and this is the Rider Guider. My, my pal Neil, the Rider Guider. Uh, he you know, made it a point to put what he said to put his 
put his T7 on a weight reduction program. And that's what I did this year. So I removed my heavy lower crash bars and I removed my heavy skid plates and I replaced them with an AXP high impact plastic skid guard, which is super light and super protective. Uh, and I replaced the lower crash bars with engine case covers uh, on the engine. So I'm gonna try that for a while and see how it works. I can tell you riding the bike today, it feels much more quick, much more nimble, much more responsive, just, just by removing that weight. And uh, so, so kudos to Neil, the rider guider, for uh, giving me some motivation to follow suit. You know, people put too much stuff on their bikes. People have way too much stuff that they're carrying around. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna qualify that comment because I know some people uh, may sort of like take offense to it or, or may interpret it the wrong way. There are several riders that I watch. Again, I wanna give shout outs again to two more vloggers who I enjoy immensely. One is, you know, we all know Amanda Zitto, the magpie, as the magpie flies. Uh, Amanda rides cross country, man. So she packs up her bike with a purpose. The other one that I also like is Tim from 40 Times Around. So Tim is the same same way. Uh, the thing that Amanda and Tim do right, that I, you know, I think they're sort of a, a model for moto camping, is they have a specific purpose to what they're riding for. So yeah, so I want to qualify that by saying it's by no means wrong. Uh, if you are, if your goal is to moto camp then by all means, I would follow the advice of someone like Amanda or Tim, right? Go to, their, go to their channel. I enjoy their channels immensely. I learn a lot of stuff from riding them, like on as far as like packing gear, you know, how to find spots to stay, you know, things like that. They do a lot of stuff related to, you know, moto camping. And that's what I would say, that's why I think it's sort of a half truth because I think when you're engaging in adventure riding, I think you have to set a specific goal for yourself on what you want to do with your ride. Do you want to experience off-road riding, like challenging technical off-road riding? Or do you want to use a capable bike that can get through some kind of sketchy shit to get you to the place where you want to be? A scenic overlook, a beautiful campsite, you know, up a mountain that you want to ride up. I mean, that's what you're, you know, that's what the goal is in adventure riding. So that would be my half-truth, that half-truth is you know, don't overpack your bike. Go through and pack exactly what you need. If you're coming out to do a ride, a technical ride, uh, there are certain tools and certain certain things that you need to take with you. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mud hole starting early on this one. All right. Honest John. Never disappoints. Okay. So, right. So, don't overpack your bike, right? So, this is not a real challenging off-road here. This is sort of basic, you know, fire road adventure riding basic kind of mud holey kind of shit right but if my bike is loaded down it's going to make it way harder to ride through this shit if my bike is like totally weighed down i'm not going to get through this stuff easily you want your bike to be like kind of nimble right get around trees so again you know like i don't know pack smart man like there's no need to overpack everything in the world on your bike especially if you're coming out for sort of like a technical sort of ride you got to negotiate these like trees and mud holes and all this garbage um you know so going through the trees here i'm trying to negotiate it oh big dip there yeah let's get out of here another big dip and let's see if we can a couple more big dips all right 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 so my bike's a little bit more nimble i got a little bit weight off it i'm only carrying what i need you know make it easier on yourself yeah buddy yeah, nice and muddy back here today. You get these Jeeps back here and they dig this shit out like big time. Ooh, this is nice and sketchy back here today. All right. All right. Honest John. Honest John Wood. So I think that's it that I had for my half truths. I don't know if I'm out of video yet or not. Uh, who knows how this is going to turn out. It was kind of a discombobulated vlog. I uh, hope everybody's doing well and everybody rides safe. Enjoy the ride. Get out. Get on those adventure bikes and ride, man. Peace out.